Welcome to the second section of your NEA write-up. This is the methodology section. So this presentation will take you through what the requirements are for you to be able to complete your methodology. So let's start off with a checklist, and this is a brief checklist of the things you need to make sure are in your methodology. So that includes what sampling you have used, whether that is random, stratified, or systematic, and that includes for choosing your sites and also for the methods that you are using at those sites. You need the name of each method you are carrying out, and you need to be able to identify whether they are primary or secondary data, and qualitative or quantitative data. You also need to be able to describe and justify the method. So you need to write a short description of what the method does and how you undertook it, and also a justification as to why you are doing that method and how it helps answer your investigation title. You also need to identify the location of your sites on an OS map and label those locations so that it is clear to the examiner this is where your method is being carried out. And final couple of things, you need to make sure that you identify the problems or the potential problems with your methods and come up with some solutions that you have introduced to try and reduce those problems and therefore making your methods and methodology overall more reliable. So with the methodology, you've got a number of layout choices. Now, there are two main ways that you can lay out your methodology, and this depends really on your preference. Choice one is in table format, and this works best on your document in landscape mode. And as you can see, with this format, you've got all of the sections that I've just outlined in the table. And so your whole methodology would be in a table over a couple of pages. The other option, if you would prefer, is in paragraph format. And so for paragraph format, you very simply have the same thing as in choice one, but the only difference is you would write it in paragraph format and you would not have to use a table. For both, you need to make sure that you simply include the technique, the justification, the location, the sampling, a description, a justification, and finally, problems and solutions. Now, with any methodology, and in fact, any independent or geographical investigation, the most important part of it is your sampling. How did you choose where you sampled and who you sampled? How large is your sample? And what strategy did you use to gain the data you have got? So a reminder of the sampling techniques. The first one is random sampling. Now, random sampling is not, I repeat, is not where you at random pick people. Random sampling is done best when a random generator is used. You can find them online quite easily, where you put in all the possible data and then that randomly picks for you which ones you are going to use or sample. So everybody has a probable chance or every location has a probable chance of being chosen with random sampling. Systematic sampling is staged intervals. So for example, every third groin, every fifth person, every second street. And finally, stratified sampling divides an area or a group of people into smaller groups and then chooses a sample size from each of those smaller groups. And that sample size represents the size of that group. And you can see visually there on the right hand side what those three sampling methods look like. So how do you actually identify and explain your sampling? First of all, I've put a link in here at the top right for you just to a ge geography fieldwork um, website that shows you all of the different types of sampling methods you could use. Now, 
To show you an example, I'm going to go back to my favourite investigation, which is an investigation into the variations in quality of life between Luton South and Harpenden. And I outlined my first sub-research question was going to be, what are the perceptions and actual levels of crime in both areas? So I'm going to now take you through how I identify the sampling here and then how I explain it. So first of all, the four steps I take are identify the sampling method I'm using, explain that sampling method, and then justify why it was used, and justify why other sampling methods were not used. So, there is now a paragraph on screen. And this paragraph takes us through one of my methods, which is the crime surveys, and also the sites, and how I have chosen the sampling. So, as you can see, I've said, when picking the sites, both at Luton South and Harpenden, systematic sampling was used. Both areas were split into 10 equal sections from one starting point to an end. The specific sites were then chosen systematically by dividing the distance by 10. So that was every 275 metres in Luton South, I had a site, and every 175 metres in Harpenden, I had a site, giving me my 10 sites. This sampling method was good because it allowed good coverage and a fair indication. It removed bias and it allowed me to use it for the crime perception surveys as well, every 10th person up to 100. So I had 10 surveys in total as well. And then I've said at the end that this was the best sampling method because it requires no prior knowledge for investigation, unlike, for example, stratified sampling, which would, as I would have to know, the size of the groups. So as you can see there, that paragraph clearly identifies the sampling method and explicitly explains why I have chosen it. So that is the type of thing you are looking to do for your methods and your sites to make sure that you clearly meet the criteria for a level four sampling in your investigation. Now, just on methods and data types, when you are choosing your methods and when you are looking at data, you need to be aware that you need a balance between primary and secondary data, and you also need a balance between qualitative and quantitative data as well. So let's just take you through a reminder of what they were. So primary data is data collected by you originally on the day of investigation, and that includes things like surveys, interviews, questionnaires, and measurements, for example, of groins. Whereas secondary data is data that is researched. It's collected by somebody else. It's data that you've used from somebody else and you have taken somebody else's work. Now, quantitative data is numerical in value. It gives you a number. It's factual. It's not opinion based. For example, growing measurements or a CCTV count are quantitative data. Now, qualitative data is opinion based. It's generally not numerical, although it can be sometimes, but it is mainly interpretation based. And that will be things like questionnaires. So what you need to do as A-level students is essentially have a good mix of primary and secondary and quantitative and qualitative data in your investigation. And this improves the reliability of your investigation overall. Now, when you have chosen a method, you need to be able to describe the steps you took to undertake that method. So it needs to be step by step and it needs to be detailed. Think of it like this. If you were to give the method to somebody else, your description should be able to have them carry out the method in the exact same way you did. So for example, here's one good example of that. A traffic count was carried out on the sample streets. I measured the distance to the middle of the street. I stood there from that point I put a timer on for one minute, three separate times. I counted the amount of cars, bicycles, lorries, and buses that went by for that minute, and I recorded them on my tally sheet. The total amount of traffic was then calculated by getting an average for each street that I did. So that is a step-by-step -step guide as to what I did for that traffic count. Similarly, I've got groin measurements here. And what I did was I went to every second groin for my sampling, so that's a systematic sampling method. I start at the first groin of the beach and there are a total of eight groin measured. So that means there were 16 groins in total along the beach, but I've measured eight through my systematic sampling. 
on each groin. I took a measurement at sea level, at the middle of the groin, and at the sea wall. So three specific points along the groin, both on the north side of the groin and the south side of the groin. I used a meter stick on each side of the groin. I got down to eye level and I carefully recorded the measurement of airspace. And then I finally calculated the average airspace on each of the groin, north and south. And that gave me an overall number. So as you can see, both of those exemplars take you through step by step exactly what I did to describe the method used. Next, justifying the method. So yes, you've said what you've done, but now you need to say why you did it. What is the point? So why are you carrying out the method? What data will it give you? And how will it help you answer your sub question or overall question of the investigation? So let's go back to my favorite investigation, looking at quality of life in Luton, South and Harpenden. And we're gonna talk about my crime questionnaire here. Now, crime questionnaire is primary data and it's qualitative. So it's data I've collected and it's data that is mainly opinion based. So here is my justification paragraph for this method. It will clarify what people feel about their own safety and their perception of how much crime exists in both Luton and Harpenden. It also tells me the main thoughts of the general public about crime. That data can be used to determine whether people think that crime is having an impact on their life and whether it's having a good or a bad impact overall. And therefore, this method can be linked to whether crime impacts quality of life overall. So that is a clear justification as to why I am doing crime surveys and how it will help me answer my overall investigation. You also need to have, as mentioned earlier, a section, could be paragraphs or could be in your table, about the problems each method may have and the solutions I've come up with to fix those problems. So this is a chance to basically crit show that you've critically thought about your methods and that you've tried to design the best possible methods to get the best possible data and make them the most reliable. So I've just listed some possible problems here that you might face and some possible solutions you could have. So first problem, um, weekend data collection means less traffic. So if you're doing a traffic count and you're doing it on a Saturday, you might gonna have less uh, traffic on that Saturday than you would on a Monday to Friday, for example. So it might not represent that place at all times. So to make it a bit more reliable and to have a solution, you might complete the traffic count at different times of the day on that Saturday, and you might try and do it at peak times for a weekend day. Another possible problem with an investigation may be another traffic count here, that you might miscount the amount of traffic going by. So a possible solution is you might have another person with you, a third party, and you might also get them to count at the same time. And then you might compare the final number you both come to. Um, another possible problem in a physical investigation, for example, is that because when you are measuring the tides at sea level, tides may change during the day. So the sea level may change. Now, what do you do? You very simply make sure that you take the sea level measurement from the exact same point on each groin all the way along the beach. So even though the sea might go further out or in, you try as much as you can to stick to the same point on the groin as long as it's safe to do so. Finally, another problem is that some people may not be willing to come forward to answer questionnaires, which will, for example, disrupt the systematic sampling. If you're saying you're gonna do every 10th person you see, that might be a problem if that 10th person does not want to answer the questionnaire. So what do you do? You just go to the next available person that will answer the questionnaire and you carry on your systematic sampling from there. So these are just ways in which you've thought about your methods, the problems you might face and the solutions you're putting in place to fix those problems and make the methods more reliable. And finally, in this section, you need a map of the location sites. So for example, I've just quickly taken an OS map extract here from uh, Luton and the surrounding area of High Town in Luton. And you can see here, all I've done is I've made sure the scale is on there and I have labeled on site one, site two, and site three along the map so I can show an examiner or anybody reading the investigation how I have chosen and where those sites are. And finally, 
Just make sure for each of these sections, so this is obviously your second section, in your introduction you did the same thing. Make sure that you keep a list of all of your references using Neil's toolbox. The link is at the top there on the Harvard referencing system. And that is to credit other people's work and to credit quotes or work from somewhere else that you may have used. That is everything that needs to go in your methodology. So good luck with your write up. Use this as a reference point. Use this as something to gain guidance from. Also use the things attached to your Google Classroom that help guide you on other things in a methodology you need to be aware of and enjoy.